there are really only a few things you have to do to take this toilet up. There are two studs that are coming up. There's one, there's the other one. There's only gonna be two of them. And you just have to take the water hose off. Pretty simple stuff. You'll need to turn the valve off and flush the toilet to release the pressure. And uh, you may have to take a pair of channel locks or uh, a wide pair of pliers to get this off. Sometimes it's pretty stout on there, or maybe you can use your hands. Let's get to it. So this is a wing nut. You can generally get these off by hand, but sometimes you may need pliers. If your threads are badly degraded, you may need to cut it off with a fine tooth metal cutting blade from a Sawzall. So when you take up a toilet, you need to understand that there's still water inside of it. Even if it's not inside the bowl, it's inside of this tube. If you tilt the toilet back, you can guarantee water's getting all over the floor. If you're going to be reusing the toilet, I've oftentimes just set it in the tub, either on its back or standing up. So this here is an old steel flange. It's not in the best of shape. Uh, what was here was a piece of PVC flange like this. I had to cut it out with the Sawzall. So I'm going to have to place this brand new one in here because the other one was broke around this. Uh, and so when the stud was on there, it could easily move. So if somebody was to sit on the toilet, the toilet would go back and forth like that. So I'm going to put this in here and attempt to find somewhere to anchor So I'm using the padded end on my hammer. I don't want to use the head of it since it would likely crack it. It doesn't need to be flush because generally the flange sits on top of the floor. So notice how it's kind of staggered. That's how you want it because the studs are going in there. To keep them from moving around when you're trying to set the toilet, you can take this plastic washer and push it down on the stud. This is about where you want it. So I'm going to slide it in the easy way first. Notice how the bolts are parallel to the back wall. In my case, it was impossible to turn with my fingers, but that's nothing a pair of fancy pliers can handle. Be sure to grip from the bottom as you most likely won't be using those threads. Here we have the reservoir and you guessed it. That's the toilet. From here you can tell that the PVC flange from earlier has space, so it doesn't have to be sunken in in the floor. I want to mention a problem that I had with these Glacier Bay toilets from Home Depot. As you can see from the opening, it's 2 and 1 8 inches. I feel like this is too small. I had a toilet get clogged up multiple times, which cost me multiple trips, until I realized what was going on. I ended up buying a new toilet, same brand, but its opening was two and three quarter inches and I haven't had a problem with it since. As you can see, these things are made in China and are mass produced, but the quality control just isn't that great sometimes. Maybe I should have tried out that Delta toilet for 30 extra dollars. Remember to install this thing in pieces as it's really heavy put together. All right, let's give it a test run. Things are looking good. Now it's time for the wax ring. These things are generally a one-time use, so be careful. Let's make sure it's centered. And go ahead and set it on. Remember, you're gonna have to push down on the toilet to flatten out that wax ring. See this gap? Let's get rid of it. All I'm doing here is making sure it's positioned right and not cockeyed. Now you're gonna have to put some weight on it. A whole lot of weight. Right now most of my weight is on the front. But you really need it over top of the wax ring itself. And we're good. It's finally flush. 
So some people caulk the bottom of their toilet. I don't do that, and I wouldn't recommend it. If your wax ring ever failed, it would rot your floors out before you'd ever know. Also, it would be a pain to remove your toilet for the next time. All right, plastic washer first, smooth side up. Hand tighten first. Now remember, don't torque these things down too much or you'll crack the flange. Just enough to get it down and you'll have to put some weight on it. See how I'm rocking back and forth and tighten it up just a little bit more. And we're ready for the caps. Notice the groove at the lip on the cap. That's gonna set right on that plastic washer. This can be kinda hard sometimes, it took me a while. Let's get the reservoir ready. So you can pretty much tell where this big rubber gasket goes. Just push it on down, make sure it fits snugly. And we're ready to set it on the toilet. Look how well this is coming together. Aren't you proud? This is going to take two hands. Once you get it started, you're going to want to push down on each side to get this reservoir to actually touch the toilet. Right now it's being pushed up by that big gasket. Inevitably, your washer is going to end up doing this. See that big gap? It needs to go long ways. See how nice and flush it's sitting? So it looks like we need to tighten it a little more. It's gonna move back and forth whenever you go to flush or set something on top of the lid. Once you get it all the way down your set, don't forget to take off that rubber band. So my intention was to replace the old hose, but due to a lap of judgment, I got the wrong size. Oh well, guess I'll just use the old one. First, you're gonna to wanna to snug it up and then back off a little bit so the hose can spin freely so you can get the other side on. Same thing here and then you're gonna to wanna to tighten it up. Remember to hold that valve as that copper pipe coming out of the wall could easily bend with enough force. All right, give it the old hand tighten. And if you feel it's necessary, use a pair of pliers, but don't get too crazy with it as they're both just plastic. We're almost done. Now let's give it a test. Mm-hmm, don't that sound good? While it's filling up, you can go ahead and check for leaks. Nothing yet. So putting the seat on is pretty self-explanatory. I will say that once you get the bolts snugged up, you're probably going to have to hold the nut with pliers and tighten the bolt down. When working with the reservoir, generally everything comes preset. But if you feel like you're not getting enough flushing power, all you have to do is turn the adjustment rod clockwise, which will fill the reservoir with more water. As the water fills, the float goes up and shuts off the valve. There's also an adjustment on the bottom of the flapper to which you can adjust how long the flapper stays open. Now you're ready to put the lid on and call it a day. Oh yeah, don't that look good? Don't forget to take a few pictures for the internet. 
so everyone can know how handy you are. Pretty soon all your friends will call for help with house projects. At least for me, that's when my cell phone stops working. The only thing left to do is give it a nice test run. Oh yes. Enjoy that flushing power. How absolutely beautiful. Now all we need to do is check for leaks. Looking good. None here. What about this? Looking good. Now that's something to be proud of. I'll see you guys in the next 